The agenda for our one-way ANOVA uh, presentation, or power and sample size, is, uh, is this. And the ultimate objective is we're going to compare the group means. We're going to set up the hypothesis, we're going to look at the, te the distribution of the test statistic under the null and alternative. We're going to rewrite this non-centrality parameter into something that, uh, in, the, in the way that the R statistical software package uses it. And then we're going to illustrate these within R. So the setup is, is this. We have data from from I different groups. So it could be I different machines, I different varieties of, of barley that you're planting, or uh, you have one barley with I different fertilizers, you know, a lot of different settings. And so our Y is really, you know, is some, you know, mean or some treatment effect with some random air. And the random error is normal, zero, sigma squared, they're independent. Uh, there's uh, a sample size of N within each group. Uh, and there's capital I different groups. So I is the number of groups, N is the sample size per group. And then when we look at this test statistic, we have this quantity here, which is the group means, the sample group means, and this is the, the grand mean. And then it's over this, which is the data itself minus the group means. So this is called the within uh, group variance, and this is the between group variance. Um, so here's the test statistic. The, our, the test that we're conducting is are the means equal or do at least two differ? Under the null hypothesis, it's a central F distribution, and it's always a one-tailed to the right. And uh, numerator degrees of freedom I minus one. Denominator is I times I N minus one degrees of freedom. Or the yeah denominator. And now when H not is true, or the alternative is true, H one is true, we have a non-central. F distribution, same numerator, denominator, degrees of freedom, but the non-centrality parameter is this. It involves um, N, which is the number of samples per group, the true variance in your error term, and then it's the sum of the square differences between the true group means and the grand mean, uh, and there's I different groups, so we look at that. Now, this is not what R uses. I mean, it does, but they trick it to, to look like something else. So we're going to rewrite this. So what we do is we take this term and we multiply it by 1, which is I minus 1 over I minus 1. So then this right here is actually the variance of the true group means. So it could be rewritten like this. So we take the sample per group, the number of groups minus one, times the variance of the true means divided by the true error variance. And this is the, the, the way R thinks about it, and this is what we'll illustrate in R. So now let me illustrate this on R. Okay, here we're in R, and um, we're going to look at the balanced one-way analysis of variance test. And balance means it's equal number of observations within each group. So here the setting might be we have I different treatment groups, and we're going to compare the mean within each of those uh, groups. And let me illustrate this with an example. I have two lines of code here because I'm, I'm going to do two examples. Here we're going to let alpha be 0.05. I equals the number of groups, which is three, and we're going to have 22 observations per group. So then let's create a little uh, F distribution that illustrates this. Now this is an F central F distribution with um, 21 degrees of freedom in the numerator and it would be 3 times 21 degree denominator degrees of freedom. And 
let's shade the region that uh, the rejection region. So now we're going to calculate our test statistic and if it falls in this rejection region we reject the null hypothesis saying hey at least two of these uh, group means are different and if, if it doesn't fall in the rejection region then we, then we say there's not enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So let's look at power and sample size and power means you have to assume that the alternative is true and so you have to pick values of the parameters that make it true meaning not all the group means are equal so if we let our within group standard deviation or variance be 500 and the group means since there's three be 120 130 135 and it's easiest to just put it in a, a vector and I'll show you why in a, in a second oh, and here's another little note when you put parentheses around your assignment it makes the assignment and also prints it to the screen which, which can be helpful now this is the non-centrality parameter we're going to call it lambda and it's a value of 5.1 and let's look at the distribution so this is a non-central F distribution with um, enumerator and degrees of freedom same as the null but the non-centrality parameter is non-zero and it was uh, 5.1 so the region for power is the probability that we're in the over the rejection region assuming that this distribution is true meaning the alternative and let's calculate power it's easy to calculate power in R you use the PF function which is the cumulative distribution function and um, and so you calculate it from the rejection region value and and, you, and then one minus it to calculate the power to the right or area to the right and the power is 49 percent so to do this within R we use the power dot ANOVA dot test and there's I was three so it's three groups N was 22 and the vector of group means you take the variance of it and that's the between group variance within variance is Sigma so that was 500 and we leave the power null because we want to calculate power and we get uh, 49 percent which is the same as calculating it from first principles so then you may say well in this setting you know three groups uh, group means that we set up there 120 130 135 or something like that and uh, we and we want 80 percent power How, what sample size would we need we would need 43 observations per arm to have 80 percent power now let's go through another example and here we're going to say that we have uh, five groups same alpha 22 observations per group of the five groups let's look at the um, central F distribution now and that's this and let's calculate the rejection region for it so now we calculate our test statistic and um, here's the rejection region if a test statistic value falls in here we reject if it doesn't then we don't um, well now let's assume the alternative is true so then we have to pick um, group you know means group means that make the alternative true and here I just added two more values so I went 120 130 135 122 and 133 as far as the group means go and I put them in the group means vector um, I calculate lambda and then we look at the uh, dis the non-central F which you uh, get when you assume that the uh, alternative is true and then the power would be this green area under the non-central F and uh, it, it's a little more so let's calculate the power and we get 57 percent and now let's use uh, R to calculate it so here 
the nice thing I is five now n is 22 group means is you know it's a bigger vector it's the one with five elements in it and uh, so here we go so 57 percent the same as when we use the first principles now let's calculate the needed sample size in this setting. So we have five groups. We need 34, 35 observations per arm to achieve 80% uh, power. So anyway, that's the end. I hope you enjoyed it.